as a first sea lord and head of the navy. What concerns you more? Uh, the recent deal that the Chinese struck with Solomon Islands, ostensibly uh, for logistics and humanitarian uh, support, or is it news that China is set to launch its first indigenously locally designed as well as built aircraft carrier? And obviously here we're talking about uh, building out their blue water uh, and forward projection abilities much, much more. So I'm not sure that I can do a complex, a direct comparison between those two because it's like asking me to compare two different types of fruit and a vegetable. Both of those are of interest to us. They're part of the evolving narrative of a security lay down across the region. And clearly China is making a huge number of investments in their military capability and building it, just as most of us, myself in the Royal Navy, we are continuing to build and develop our capabilities. What matters to me actually is how they are going to be used. If we have a shared commitment to upholding the rules-based international system, to allowing nations to trade and go about their business within that construct as they choose, then clearly we would wish to work in partnership and dialogue uh, with the Chinese. And we continue to make, make it clear, as do a number of other nations around the region, that constructive dialogue is, is what we want. But we also have to recognize that these developments have to be watched and mirrored. We have to pay attention to what that may mean for regional security and make preparations accordingly. Now, you wouldn't expect me to go into the details of how we in the Royal Navy, British Defense and with our partners are necessarily doing that. But this isn't some, these are activities that can sit uh, side by side. One, to reach out and say, if you want to share our values, then that's great. We'll work with you. If you don't, then we'll be ready to respond. Admiral, don't you think that uh, we should also be saying we are prepared to look at your values uh, as well as anything else? The rules-based international order, uh, as keeps being mentioned, is something that was constructed by uh, people uh, and systems uh, that are historical. And we have a new history being made with China's growing uh, economic and political presence in the world, which if you look at it from a glass half full perspective, uh, might actually contribute a considerable amount to our shared common prosperity. And yet, when we keep talking about you have to accept our values, it's not somewhat confrontational. Um, I haven't said you have to accept our values. What I've said is if you share our values and we can, we can reach a common cause and partnership, then this, this, of course, we would wish to work with each other and, and together. But what is really yeah. important about the rules-based international system, which is, as I absolutely agree has grown up over time, is that individual nations choose to take that on board. And over time, mm -hmm. through the auspices of the United Nations and others, this has become the accepted norm by which the world goes about its business. What we're seeing at the moment, though, is that some nations are choosing to challenge that broader globally accepted construct and to say we don't agree but they can't impose their views of course they can suggest they can offer right this has been a, a continual development of human understanding but to sit there and say we are unilaterally opting out and this is now how the world is to operate i'm not sure that is necessarily the way in which um the majority of the world wishes to see the modern contemporary way of living side by side with each other to be done right